For as long as Excel has existed, it's been able to do calculations based on data we have, but now everything's changed because now Excel is also able to actually find the data and look it up. So here, as you can see, I have Avengers Endgame, um, very, very famous movie, highest grossing of all time, with these are the actors, and that is actually their image inside the cell. Let's switch it, let's look at Titanic, for example. There you go, how cool is that? So it's got all the main actors, it's got the image, even where they were born and what their height is, something you may wanna know about the actors. So this can work with loads and loads of things. In fact, it's not particularly difficult to do either. Let's uh, try it right now. So I'm going to say that I wanna see Memento, great movie. And then I'm gonna to go to the data tab and in data types, I'm gonna choose Wolfram. I'll explain what all of these are soon, but I can open up the card and I can see all of this basic information about it. And I can add that there. I can add other stuff like the rating as well and other things like it. Or it can work with loads and loads of different data types. So for example, food. So for example, food here, I just looked up this recipe online. I just kind of copy this and paste it there. Let's paste it as just values. And then I can go to data types and I can choose all from again. There you go. And now I've got this different icon and I can say, well, what are these going to be in terms of fat, total fat? How much is it going to have in terms of calories? I can go through all of these calories from fat, etc. cetera. Uh, just like regular Excel, I can sum it together and see what that yields. So. It's got all these different types of things, music as well. Um, in fact, it's got over a hundred different data types which it's able to return. But before we go into it, let's backtrack to the time where I met Albert Einstein. And that is because relativity and quantum theory has something to do with this. <laughs> so pre 20th century, everyone thought they figured out physics. And then suddenly these two massive theories came about that completely revolutionized everything we thought we knew about it quantum mechanics, the science of the very small, and the theory of relativity, the science of the very big. And why is that relevant to Excel? Because pre-2020, there was one fundamental concept. One cell could contain one value, no more, no less. And then everything changed. Since 2020, one cell can now contain multiple values. And one formula can return multiple cells. So we're going to see examples of both of these. In fact, we've already kind of seen them, but we'll see what that means as we go into this. So my name is David Ben Iman. I have plenty of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Teams, Zoom. If you're using tech at the office, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you like what you see and you wanna see some more content. Let's get started in Excel. You just kind of create some data sets like this. And then if you go to the data tab, you have the data types here, the linked data types. So stocks, currency, and geography actually come with every Excel version, uh, even Excel on the web, including the free version of Excel on the web. And then from your organization, this is Power BI data types. So I'll show you a brief glimpse of those. But then Wolfram, this is the stuff that's brand new. And this is why I call the Excel encyclopedia. So you can choose which one you want, like I could click on music, or what I tend to do is just go to automatic because it usually does a pretty good job at guessing what you need to. Underneath here, it says converting to linked data types, press escape to cancel. Uh, there are a few different aspects to this, so I can click on the icon to show the card, and that will have the image and some basic information about it. It's very cool that you can browse this card as well. So I could say that I want to look at this country, and expand United States of America. And then I can keep browsing what's in there. I can look at all the largest cities. So let's look at this. So these are the largest cities in the US and then get more information at that level there. So I can also select it and I can click on this icon. And then I can say, for example, I wanna see the image. And then where it doesn't know it, it might give you this field error. Of course, you can expand to make it bigger and we can expand something else. Let's, for example, get the country where they're from. Oh, all US except for this one that's UK. And it does return. This is another data type. As you can see, there's another icon. I can show the card and I can keep going. I can right click on one of these and you have these things for data types. So show the card. That just opens the card. Or you can choose data type and then you get these three options. 
So refresh, this is in instances where you have data that's constantly refreshing. For example, stock and currency rates, that's very relevant for. Convert to text is to go back to nothing and then all of these break. Um, notice that if I copy and paste that, that will copy and paste it as a data type. And also I can right click it and choose to change it. And changing it will prompt the data selector over here. For example, maybe I wanted the music album Pearl Jam rather than the music act. So Wolfram tries to guess based on the proximity of the others. So if all of these are music acts, then it will do that one. But if I just want the album, I can click on that and then it will give me different things. I get uh, who the artist who sung that was, the release date, um, other things around it. And here I get the tracks as well. So I can explore the tracks and I can see other stuff about each track as I keep drilling down through this encyclopedia. Um, these kind of things always work best when you are in a table. So a table, a lot of people don't use this in Excel, but if you go to insert and then table, press okay. Then you get all of these kind of features, like you can play around with how the formatting looks. You can rename it, resize it. But the good thing about the table is that wherever you are in the table, you can just add like, for example, all of these things, maybe the image. Uh, sometimes they don't work and it gives you that sort of thing, the rating, etc. So you can just add new columns for it. And what's nice is that it gives you the header, which it doesn't do in these cases. You can see that here it didn't give me the header. So you can also do this through formulas. So if I look at the formula bar, this is s2.image. But I can also just write something else. So I can write equals this one dot. And then I get all of this notation. I can tab it to make sure that it goes in. And I can get to the same thing as pointing and clicking just through the formulas. So I can write, for example, equals this one dot. And then I like this drop down list that you get here. This is really, really useful. So I can say dot cast and rolls. And then it actually returns the data in multiple rows here. So this is one of the things that I was talking about in dynamic arrays, which is Excel can return something in multiple rows and or multiple columns. In fact, if I put transpose, which is often what I do with data types, then it actually flips it and I can keep going. Let's say this isn't very useful because you know, I, I can only really get what that role is and who the person is, but I want to get information about the cost. So I can write equals this one dot cost, and then it will give me the actual actor name. And once I've got the actor name, I can actually nest things on there. So let's say that I want to say dot cost, and then I want to know, well, what is the image of that person? So I can say dot cost dot image, and I can get there like that. And because this is in a cell, I can just drag it across here. So you can type in, the formulas are actually super easy to write because Excel gives you the dropdown list. But what is very cool is being able to go from one to another and then go down and down and down and down into the Excel encyclopedia. Dynamic arrays is just such a revolutionary thing as well. So this is having one formula return multiple values. So the classic way of doing equals sales divided by clients was like this, and then we had to drag it down. I'm sure you're very, very familiar with that. But with dynamic arrays, what you can do is you can do equals all the column for sales divided by all the column for clients, and then it will return this in multiple rows and multiple columns. Notice the blue outline to signify that this is a dynamic array. And with dynamic arrays comes a whole host of new functions. So equals unique, and then say I want the unique focuses, or equals sort unique, and then choose all of these. And then it not just gives you them, but also sorts them. This is dynamic as the name implies. So the moment that this goes away and becomes the same as something else, then these return a different number of rows. So what data types are available? Well, this is Wolfram. Wolfram is a data repository organization that has partnered with Excel to provide it with all of this data. I call this the Excel encyclopedia because you can return data about all of these. So we've seen movies and music, but there's so much more artworks, books, fictional characters, and then 
libraries, schools, cities, countries, life sciences like animals, dinosaurs, health and medicine, space and astronomy, just all of these over a hundred different kinds of data types. We looked at food as well. So there are so many things that you can get Excel to do on mass research for you. Now you do need a Microsoft 365 subscription to access these Wolfram data types. There are other data types available with the free versions. This comes pre-installed by default if you're an education or a personal customer, but if you're a corporate customer, then I explain how you can get these data types in the description down below. Here are some more cool examples. So names, uh, you can look up all of these names and see the rank. This is in terms of US stuff, the age distribution of that name. Uh, you can just click the plus button here. And then if it's in a table, it will add them for everyone. So I might want to make that bigger to see the chart a little bit clearer. But yeah, there you go. There you go for uh, if you're choosing baby names, that can be quite useful. Um, planets, again, you can click on these or you can do this one dot and then give you some other details. Then over here, notice that if you do the dot, it doesn't rename it like it does if you press the plus button. Um, these are medicines, so this can be pretty good if you want to look at uh, certain things about the medicine. It does it through chemistry, so this is quite chemical, but it can give you some useful stuff to know about the medicine uh, of what it does. Organs as well, useful things that you might want to know there, or let me expand this. So you can also have like um, animals. So notice that if I write in a third one, that I will get this prompt that says convert it to an animal. So I'm going to do that. But here's what's interesting. It renamed that from hyenas to hyenas and aardvils. And with panda, it doesn't know whether I want giant panda or red panda. Now they are actually very, very different animals. If you press OK, it takes you to the next question mark one. And here it doesn't know for Colosseum if I want a structure or a historical site. You can specify by choosing one of these. Notice there has a different icon there for what it wants. And notice that this is a Great Barrier Reef, so another different type. It's a, it tells you if you scroll down what type it is. So this is a type of reef. So reef is actually a data type in Wolfram. So if you expand something here, um, some of the things you'll get, like probably longitude and latitude you'll get, but for example, this one you might not get. It might give you a different thing like that. So it's something to be aware of. Um, here's a way you can double down on it. Actually, a little bit of a hack. So you have the geography data type that's been around for a while, and you can actually get this for free even if you use Excel online. Um, also, stocks and currency have been around for a while, but these have different type of data sets. So these are, this is where I live, Cambodia and some other similar. So if I click on this one, the plus will give me CPI, CPI change, currency code. If I go to the next one and choose that, I don't actually get those details and I get other details here. So if you double down, you can get way more stuff about each one. So for example, this one can give me things like the Gini index. But this one doesn't have that and this one can give me like the gasoline price if you have any data type that's not here you can even create your own from your organization so i've actually created a covid countries one and i've also got uh, staff in my organization and then if you go from your organization you can choose there uh, i have a whole video showing you how to do this you need to be using power bi and then i've just added these so these are some characters you may recognize but i've given them the KG, the roles, etc. And what's recent is now you can actually extract the images if there are images in the Power BI data types as well. So that's something I recently realized. Now you can have fictional characters in Wolfram Alpha as well. I've never tried this, but let's see if it works. Let's go to automatic. And there you go. That means it's the fictional person. <laughs> it doesn't have that much about them, but it does give you a little bit. Wow, it has a date of birth. That's interesting. So let's say I wanted to go a little bit further. So I'm going to do this one dot fossil fuel energy consumption, for example. I do get a field error because it just doesn't exist. However, I can sort of circumvent that by wrapping it around an if error function. I love if error. You just have your regular value, press a comma, and then if error, I'm just going to say 
speech marks, speech marks, so empty. And then it just gives me that one. You can also filter your data by things that are not even showing here. So I can filter it by any one of these things like religions, regions. So I can say only give me the ones that have a certain proportion of Islam. And that will be Malaysia. So you're able to filter by fields that are not even showing there, which is pretty nice. So I hope you liked my video on the Excel Encyclopedia. If you did, then please give me the like button and subscribe to my channel because I have more content that I release weekly on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Teams, Zoom. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. Thanks for watching.